Look at a couple of new faces for Radford as well. Mike Jones in his 10th season as the head coach of Radford. I get a brand new starting five after winning the regular season last year in the Big South. Not a couple new faces, eight new faces. He's got a whole new team. But Mike Young is an experienced coach coming off back-to-back -back regular season titles in the Big South. He knows how to get this done, Bailey. Well, Kev A. Aluma in the middle with the tip, and we are underway in the 2020-2021 basketball season, and Wabisa Beatty running the floor now for Virginia Tech. Aluma, the transfer from Wofford, comes up a bit short, and it stays with Virginia Tech. Ted Valentine with the officials, joined by Bill Covington and Tim Comer. Aluma, a guy that followed Mike Young here to Blacksburg, Mac. Yeah, four returning starters, but Keve Aluma is a big newcomer. Sat out last year, really improved. This is a guy that can play bigger than his, than his stats mentioned. Yeah, seven points per game, seven rebounds per game. Speaking of stats, Tyrese Radford leading the Hokies as a returning starter, returning scorer with the most points last year, averaging double figures. Not to mention leading rebounder, too, at about 6'3". Generously, 6-3. Well, Aluma off the mark. And it goes to Radford. So now looking at this lineup for Radford, I already see a freshman in the lineup in Famir Ali. Be taking the ball up for the Highlanders now. Uh, Wilmington, Delaware, and Mike Young, first time he's getting to see this bunch out there together, not in practice. Both of these coaches will learn a lot about their teams today that they haven't been able to so far, Bailey. Well, Lewis Jonkum's going to go right to the line. One of the few returners that Mike Jones actually has for Radford, the transfer from VCU. Yeah, and watch out for Jonkum. He's a good player. The, you mentioned transfer from VCU out of Springfield, Virginia. He's got a chance to be really good. Well, both teams yet to score so far, 45 seconds in. And coming out of Springfield, Virginia. And watch out for that matchup down low with him and Aluma, although it looks like Aluma's been setting up on the outside in the opening possession. Chonkum takes the lead for Radford. You can see a lot different Virginia Tech offense. They can do a lot more things with this bunch, and you'll see the other newcomers off the bench. But they'll have some inside presence where last year, if you ran Virginia Tech off the arc, Virginia Tech had very little chance to win the basketball game. They've got more ways to score than they did a year ago. That's going to be interesting to see if the Hokies are going to have that guy to take it inside to the paint this year after really setting up for perimeter shot for most of the year. Here's Hunter Couture. A good play by Ali as he goes to the floor. And it's stolen away by Jeffers. Here comes Manga making his Radford debut. Going reverse layup to make it 3-0. Yeah, transfer from Charlotte. He's out of Roxborough, North Carolina. A guy that Radford recruited hard out of high school. Got him the second time around. Now the Highlander's pretty hyped up right now. Hokies without a basket. That's what Bisa Beatty had over five assists per game last year. Can't hit the bunny. He's a really good leader. He was a big key to last year's team overachieving by his leadership skills and how just tough he is, Bailey. And it's going to be interesting to see what he can do offensively because at times last year, Wabisa Beatty did struggle offensively, but was, like we said, branded as a facilitator for the Hokies and almost stole that one away. Matchup against the freshman. Beatty is harassing him pretty well. Walker pulls up. And he's got it. Yeah, Kyrie Walker, he was the one guy that Mike Jones mentioned he was really excited about. Another transfer out of the University of Delaware, as is Justin Mutz for the Hokies. Yeah, we're going to see Justin Mutz coming up soon as Tyrese Radford. And we didn't see him shoot a lot of threes last year, but Mike Young had said that you're going to expect to see Tyrese Radford to shoot a lot more than he did last year. Well, for Radford, a hot start so far. Drayvon Mangum here. Going reverse on Aluma. It looked tough so far, Mac. Very athletic play, a little inside out action, and, and Walker knocks down the 15 footer. Bradford will run a lot of set plays. Mike Young has always done a great job with this half court offense, taking advantage of matchups, creating a lot of big on little screens. And a three taken by Mangum, can't hit it. Hokies still looking for their first basket. 
Kick it out to Aluma. Can't get his first points as a Hokie just yet. Ranford's always good defensively. Mike Young, an outstanding, I mean, Mike Jones. Mike Young and Mike Jones, <laughs> both with Radford connections. But uh, Mike Jones has done a great job at Radford in his decade there. Ali driving baseline, hands it off. You can't hit the layup, even after a great job of driving down the baseline. See if the Hokies can score in transition. Swing it out, Radford. He's got it. Nothing but net for Tyrese Radford. He knocked the lid off that basket. We'll see if that gets the Hokies going. Radford has really worked hard on his shooting. And the year that he sat out, the, the year before Mike Young arrived, he was in that gym every single day because he was home a lot, didn't travel with the team as he redshirted. Uh, I think he's got a chance to be a, a, a multi-level player. Well, speaking of multi-level players, there's Kev Aluma. First basket as a Hokie, and it's a dunk to tie the game. Aluma's strong enough to battle down on the block, but agile enough to get out and run and transition, as you just saw. Uh, Jeffers almost lost the ball, corralled it in front of Couture. The logo, five of the shot clock. Just a bit too short. Rebound, and the stick back can't fall. Comes Ali. Almost had the end one. Well, we got a close one so far here in Blacksburg. The season has tipped off, and it's tied at Castle Coliseum. Hokies and Highlanders battling in game one. So with AT&T, you can pick the perfect plan for each family member with the features they want, like HBO Max or... What was that? Happens every time I say HBO Max. Cool. HBO Max. It can read? It's not complicated. Now you can save more with AT&T wireless plans and get things your way with features like HBO Max included. Did you know Duracell Optimum can make devices work even better than Copper Top? This toothbrush brushes quicker. This screwdriver turns speedier. This fan spins faster. Upgrade your devices with Duracell Optimum. Who could have known that extra love could add extra pounds? That all those accidents could have a medical explanation? Or that the smallest changes could make the biggest impact? You did, and so did we. That's why Hills always starts with a pet's biology to anticipate their ever-changing nutritional... First couple of games that the Hokies had, they got off to a hot start going into Hawaii and beating a ranked Michigan State team. It's kind of dropped off at the end with the league play and the ACC tournament. The Hokies were walloped in the final game of the season by North Carolina. Not a pretty tough one so far, taking a little while to heat up offensively. First shot off the mark for Famir Ali making his college debut today. Yeah. Bailey, you know, normally by now the teams have scrimmaged, they've maybe played an exhibition game, and this is literally the first outside competition, and both teams are showing a little bit of nerves, but Radford's certainly not intimidated coming in here to Castle. And like you mentioned, the last time they were in here, Mike Jones team won. Right. Well, it's been a few years since Radford was able to do that, but he knows that it is a possibility that Radford was actually able to beat Virginia Tech. I don't believe it was exactly the last time, but it was early on in the Buzz Williams administration where the Highlanders actually did get the win. There's Cartier Jada leading the way for Virginia Tech, the transfer from Kansas State. And another steal mugged inside of the paint. Tenth meeting. Last time Radford was here, Hokies were able to beat them, but the time before that, Radford was able to steal a win away from Virginia Tech. Jada with his first basket as a Hokie. Yeah, and right there you see something different. Virginia Tech didn't have many transition opportunities last year. Jada's capable of creating those on his own. Here comes Jeffers, a kick out to Lipscomb. Another freshman from Washington, D.C. for Mike Jones' team. 
Lee. Trying to scoop it out of bounds, or scoop it over to Walker, and it goes out of bounds. Well, Cartier Jada is going to add a lot of speed to Virginia Tech this year, Mac. Yeah, it's fast. He's quick. He can really push it and find people in transition or take it all the way to the rim. This is a guy who, who averaged almost 14 points a game and four rebounds at Kansas State. It's going to mean a lot to a Mike Young team to already have that veteran presence. Another graduate transfer in the lineup for Virginia Tech coming off of the bench. Also, a, another transfer we see out there right now, Justin Mutt says, Jada, make that back-to-back -back possessions with the layup from the Kansas State transfer. Again, you're seeing the different dimensions of Virginia Tech offense that weren't available to Mike Young and his staff a year ago. Sean Porter, freshman, another one on the floor for Radford. And a good shot nailed by the guard there in Josiah Jeffers. He really looks good. A junior out of Burlington, North Carolina. He's playing with a lot of confidence already. Showing that good quickness, elevation on the jump shot. There's the creativity by Jada again. Oh, a miss three for Virginia Tech from David and Gusan. The drive in the paint and foul. Kasana, another new face, just a freshman. Penetration. Nice job attacking the rim by Redford. Yeah, we've seen Mangum drive in a few times already. Well, Radford hasn't played scared in these first seven minutes, Matt. No, not at all. They, they, they are plenty confident. Of course, Mike Young, he's had a lot of big wins. We mentioned beating Virginia Tech here, but they, they've had big wins all over the country, and this program is really proud of being a giant killer. And made the NCAA tournament a few years ago, lost to number one seed Villanova, actually in the same building as Virginia Tech, and neither team was able to advance. And a uh, foul called on Radford, so the Hokies get the ball back. Here's Joe Bamasil, a freshman. Freshman guard from Chesterfield, Virginia. And Jada running the point again. Off the screen, pulls up, and sinks the long two. You see he's another lefty, just like Aline and Radford. The whole court is tilted over to the left side. <laughs> Hokies taking the lead for the first time. Jeffers pulling up, gets the lead right back. Boy, nice job by Jeffers, had the mismatch. He backed the sign off with a little bit, just created a little space and knocked it down. Really nice play by Jeffers. Oh, Jada running the point for Virginia Tech has taken shots when he has ran the ball up the floor. Out to Mutz. Off the mark in his first shot attempt, the Delaware transfer. That's a, a really good driver, really good rebounder, but has, has worked really hard on his shot, too. They think he can knock that down consistently. It's a bit rare for Virginia Tech to see Mutz shoot the three. He was 2 of 18 in his last year playing. Is now the foul. Jeffers hitting the floor. Again, Radford. They've made a couple of perimeter shots. Now you've got to close out hard, and they can shot fake and drive and either get to the rim or get to the free throw line. Well, the Hokies have already tallied up four fouls. Radford with one. Porter swings it up to the logo. Porter, highly recruited young man. Out of North Carolina, Southwest Edgecombe High School. Good bounce in to Walker. And an offensive foul. So Mutz draws the charge, and that'll bring us to a break. Radford, player at Western Kentucky, went to Fork Union like our guy David Jackson on the Virginia Tech staff, and Donnie Lind, who came from VCU with Mike Jones, an outstanding group.
Well, you look at that last season for Radford. They're the perennial top team in the Big South. Last year went 22 and 11, won the Big South regular season. Lost in the Big South tournament, but the NCAA tournament, as we know, didn't happen anyway. Artier Jada. Here's Banasil. Not too hard. Hokie starting out ice cold from beyond the arc. Yeah, both teams, two for 12 now combined for both teams to start this game. It's kind of disrupted the rhythm of the start. And this is this looks like almost like a first game of the year, really. Right. It's almost like they haven't scrimmaged <laughs> anybody. <laughs> Interestingly enough, though, one three hit by Virginia Tech. That was by Tyrese Radford. He hit one all of last season. He was one of 12 from three-point land, and he's already got one in the first 10 minutes of the first game. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's going to be a, a reach to say that he'll make a whole lot more than one this year. He's really worked hard, and, you know, you you got to play him as a driver because he's so dangerous at getting to the rim, but that means he's got a little space to jump up and shoot the ball. If he can do that, like I mentioned, he's got a chance to be a three-level scorer, which is a really dangerous weapon for Mike Young. I'm going to call Mike Young and Mike Jones <laughs> the different names all day. Right. Just, so just, just bear with me. <laughs> battle, battle of the Mikes today. Here's Jonkum. Shot clock running down to five. Lipscomb up to Ali. He's got to shoot it. And there's a shot clock violation. So a good defensive stand by the Hokies, but you're absolutely right, Mac, and I think that's going to be the theme of the first couple of basketball games of this season. These teams haven't played legit live action against anybody else, so this is the first time they're seeing a team that is not in a Virginia Tech uniform, that's not in a Radford uniform, and they're trying to work out the kinks, and you're seeing it happen right here. Well, not only that, you, you have a lot of new players playing in new roles, and everybody is getting used to what the chemistry will look like. You know, who, can, who can do what in live action? Bradford a bit short, followed his own shot, though. A fresh shot clock for Wabi Sabidi. At 6'3", Evans, over six rebounds a game in the ACC. Beatty misses from 17 feet. Comes Lipscomb, freshman that Mike Jones was pretty excited to talk yeah. about. He doesn't look like a freshman, does he? No. Big, strong young man. Lee with Beatty in his face and a great job by Wabisa Beatty to poke that ball loose. The official says it was off of the Massachusetts native for Virginia Tech and Jeffers is ready to come back in for Radford. Beatty's been around so long he's on a first name basis with all these officials. <laughs> he was pleading his case to no avail. Graduate student from North Andover, Massachusetts. Recruited by Buzz Williams, one of the holdovers from the last coaching staff now obviously at Texas A&M. And an offensive foul on Radford. Yeah, a little illegal screen right there. Jonkum didn't quite get set. That's a point of emphasis. Has been for a couple of years now. Teddy Valentine explaining what happened. You'll see it right here. You'll see him moving, and then you'll see him extend to try to get a piece of the defender. Uh, see there him reach is. out there and shove just a little bit. Uh, officials did not hesitate on that one, so the Hokies have it back. And Nahim Aleen on the floor. Haven't gotten to talk much about Aleen, another returner for Virginia Tech. Watch out for him in the wing. And Pencil on the floor now, the transfer from Iowa. The first time as a Virginia Tech Hokie. Pencil does a lot of things. Great screener. Really understands offense. Petey has to shoot it. Well, the Hokies cannot hit a shot right now, starting out 5 of 17 from the floor. Both teams doing a good job in their man-to-man. -man. Both these coaches are, both these guys are kind of old school in the fact that they really spend a lot of time on fundamentals. Oh, using up most of the shot clock, both Virginia Tech and Radford. See if that stays through here with Radford on a slight drive, and he kicks it back out. Aline down the baseline. Missed to tie the game. Nice job by Aline to drive it and create a little space. Couldn't finish it, though. Another area where Virginia Tech ought to be better with length and, and more depth 
some size. They ought to be able to do a little better on the offensive glass. That was kind of non-existent a year ago. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Pencil can add as far as the boards as well as Justin Mutz. Oh, off the mark again. Once again, both teams are very patient getting these shots up, and not all of them are high percentage shots. This one might be, though, if Radford steps inside and trains it. That's the three levels. The three, the mid-range like he can do right there, and obviously you've seen, if you're a Virginia Tech fan, you've seen him get to the rim a lot. Five points already for Tyrese Radford. Mutz is so athletic, he can switch off on guards. Bounce inside and an and one. Lewis Jockham, the VCU transfer, trying his luck in the paint. We talked about him early on. 6'9", 245, sets the screen and rolls to the rim. Pimsel got a little flat on the defense. Jonkum had the angle on him. Well, Jonkum, like we said, one of the few returners opened up the broadcast saying Radford has a lot of new faces. This isn't one of them, but he only averaged around three points per game last year. Yeah, that's how good that team was. A, a guy as good as Jonkum wasn't really able to crack the lineup on a regular basis. And Jonkum finishes off the old-fashioned three-point play. Beatty with a bounce into Mutz. Double of bounces and Aluma lost the ball. So Radford still leads in the season opener. Highlanders up 16 to 13 here. Yeah, the, the transfer portal giveth and the transfer portal taketh away. And unfortunately, Carly Jones, a great score, has taken his skills to Louisville, Kentucky. Also worth noting for Radford, they are missing Travis Fields, who graduated last year. It was another first team All Big South selection. So there's two big names in the Highlanders lineup that they do not have moving into the 2020-2021 season. And we're, we're getting the first look at who might take those places. Well, for Cartier Jada coming off of the bench, now right back on. Aluma finds Radford. Shot clock running down again. Hokies have been patient on offense. Aline at the buzzer. Tipped in the air and a foul booked on Jonko. Yeah, that, that's one thing again. I, I, I will be surprised if Virginia Tech is much better on the offensive glass than a year ago. You see the three and you see Aluma go to the rim. A lot of times last year, all five players were getting back because defensive transition was so important and they had very little chance to get an offensive rebound anyway, to be honest. Here's a Luma from downtown. There's his first three as a Virginia Tech Hokie. He's going to be a big addition. He really understands the Mike Jones offense. That was a set play on the baseline out of bounds. And we saw all last year, Bailey, how good Virginia Tech can be in special situations. Now trying to move in transition back. Here's Couture. And a sophomore misses. The Hokies able to keep it, though, after Radford wasn't able to corral it. Watch this baseline out of bounds. Nice design where Luma screens and then pops out. His man had to help on the screen, left him wide open for the tray. Maluma following Mike Young from Wofford. Had to sit out last year due to NCAA transfer rules. Now back with his head coach. He took advantage of that time to really work on his body and his skills. He was a big, he was a big part of that team last year, even though he wasn't playing because they had to play against him in practice every single day. I remember the last time he was playing basketball, actually got to go to the NCAA tournament with Wofford. His final season there before Mike Young took the job here in Blacksburg, the Southwest Virginia native. There's a lead and a jump stop. Tried to feed it inside, and the basket somehow falls. Bradford six for seven for 17. The Hokies are seven for 22 from the field so far. Just 31%. Well, Shaq Jules, there's a D2 transfer for Radford. Jada with an underhand and Aluma with a tomahawk jam. Shot is so good. 
you know, he, he can make a play even though you don't run a play. Aljada, a guy that had 13 points per game last year for Kansas State, four dimes a game, already facilitating here for Virginia Tech with a rebound. Flying down the court, Tyrese Radford. Aljada throws it back in, but it's intercepted. Trayvon Mangum back into the game for Radford and running the floor. John, not a big guy, but averaged four rebounds a game at Kansas State. Got the defensive rebound and a hand on the offensive rebound as you see a great baseline drive right there. Nifty layup for Mangum to give Radford the lead back. He's had a couple reverse layups like no one was there. Really nice play for the long athletic sophomore. Yeah, playing in his first game after transferring from Charlotte. Jada steps inside, Aluma. Oh, he's not afraid to take the three. Aluma. 21-20, Aluma starting to heat up for Virginia Tech. Swing it inside, oh, Jules. Interestingly enough about him, Mike Jones had never even seen him in person. He just mm. saw him on film, and then because of COVID-19, he transferred to Radford without ever getting to practice in front of Mike Jones. And now today, he's got two baskets. Sight unseen. Well, there's a sight to behold there. Jada with a great job on that lamp and a timeout called by Mike Young. So now the Hokies lead by one, going to break here. Up against a New River foe, 20 figures. Yeah, you're seeing him on the defensive end battle down low. You're seeing him start out down low on, on offense. There you see a little screen and roll going to the basket. Got some athleticism, and he can step out and shoot the three, two for four already. And he's just a really cerebral, undersized post. Oh, the 6'9", redshirt junior, following Mike Young from Wofford and leading the Hokies in scoring right now, leading everyone in scoring. Only player on the floor in double figures. Radford, though, has kept this game pretty tight. They have not shot the ball lights out either. I mean, just 9 of 20. Hokies are 10 of 26. Also, Rafford has gotten to the line for five free throws. Hokies have yet to take a trip to the charity strike. Here's Jeffers on a lead. Bounce inside. And a steal from Jada. Wide open, Bamasil. Bamasil's come in with a lot of confidence. Very mature freshman. Wasn't bashful either, was he? No, not at all. I mean, <laughs> nobody really has looked scared to shoot at all. No one's been reluctant. They just haven't fallen. That one that did, though. Wow. Drayvon Mango. He's had a couple athletic-looking layups, and now he steps out and shoots the three. Oh. Effort bench wanted to walk there. Aline steps inside. Swing it out, Mangum. Little heat, little heat check right there. And the freshman able to pick away the defensive board. Bamisil. What a great rebound by Aluma, but couldn't keep it alive. Bradford with the numbers. See if they take advantage of it. Out to Jeffers, wide open. Swirls out. Hokies could have had a little better communication than that in transition. Got away with one with Jeffers missing the wide open tray. Bamisil, what a step. Athletic play made by the freshman. Count it with a foul. Bailey, you love that play. He's missed a couple jump shots. Realize that. Shot fake, drive it, and plays through the contact all the way to the rim. I talked about how strong he is and how mature he is for just a freshman. That's outstanding. Yeah, that averaged 28 points per game at Monacan High School in Chesterfield, Virginia, not too far outside of Richmond, Virginia. First team All-State selection in the VHSL. A big recruit for Mike Young of the Commonwealth of Virginia.
And the end one completed by Vanasil to give the Hokies the lead back. There's Couture. There's another name to watch out for this year, the sophomore from Orlando, Florida. Right at the end of the year, we saw Hunter Couture heat up and become a player that a lot of Virginia Tech fans that are very ex excited about. Yeah, it was averaging nearly double figures down the stretch. Out of Orlando, Florida, Bishop Moore High School, an outstanding basketball school. And for Couture, had 14 points in the final game of the season. As Justin Mutz packed that shot, but there's a foul anyway. Mutz can really get up. Got beat here off the dribble by a guard, but recovered in time to block the shot. Got a little body. The officials are in early season form, too. <laughs> I got a little bit of body, but after that was chucked up, he got all ball. So we'll see a trip to the line from Ali. Mutz is going to contribute on the offensive glass. He's going to contribute uh, scoring to basketball. He can really drive it. Worked on his perimeter shooting quite a bit. He's going to make, uh, he's been a little dinged up, a little hamstring here and hadn't been at full strength in practice. And talk about a journey for a college player with Justin Mutz. This is now his third college he's played at. Started out at high point, then went to Delaware where he averaged 12 points per game and 8.4 rebounds per game. Bounce inside to Mutz. There's some points for the new Pokey. Beautiful high-low, duck in on the backside. You saw him get it to Aluma early, and he didn't finish it, but that time Mutz did finish it through a little contact on the block. Virginia Tech in transition. Radford with a bit of contact there. And no foul called. It'll stay with the Hokies anyway. That was one of the things Radford did really well a year ago. Get to the rim through the contact and got to the free throw line a lot. You see him attack the rim right there. Good defense by Mangum. Mangum is really playing well on both ends of the floor. Yeah, Mangum starting out three of six. I imagine it's got to be tough for some of these transfers who had to sit out a year and then aren't able to scrimmage anybody either. That looked easy for Nahima Lean, though. Lean finally gets one to go through the hoop for him. Had some big offensive games last year. Really nice stroke for the left-hander out of Georgia. Keyshawn Porter. Ali tries outside. And Jeffers fumbles the pass. It was a good job by Couture staying home. Usually you help on that baseline drive and they kick it to the other corner. Couture stayed at home and forced the turnover. Obisa Beatty back into the game as the point guard for the Hokies. Aline pulls up. Switch. How about that? How about that as a called play from the sideline by Mike Young? Aline made one. Let's go back to him on the dribble handoff. Really good execution. Aline was trying in the 15-footers earlier in the game. Now going back from downtown, able to hit his first three of the year. Ali stepping out, back in, lost the ball. Great defense by the Hokies. Here comes Aline. Starting to heat up, and he's fouled, and he'll go to the line. Good job, a little shot fake. You made two in a row. Now they've got to close out on you. And he was able to go by. Walker couldn't quite get there in a legal guarding position in time. Laleen just south of double figures in his first year at Virginia Tech. 8.8 .8 points per game. Nearly 40% from three, about 80% from the free throw line. Really has a nice stroke. Would it, I think Mike Young in an ideal situation would have loved to have red shirt him, but Aline just played so well, and they were a little short-handed, and he ended up having an outstanding freshman year. And Aline hits both at the free throw line. Largest lead of the game now for Virginia Tech. Get eight points after struggling with Radford early on. Important couple possessions coming up here in these last in this last minute for Radford. And see what Mangum can do. He's been a hot hand for the Highlanders so far. He's got a lean. He's got an undersized defender on him. A foul booked on Jada. 
And that's the seventh foul, his second. So it's going to be a one and one. So Ali goes back to the line so far today, three of four. And hits the front end of a one and one. In our Zoom call the other day, uh, Coach Jones was talking about how much he liked Ali and thought he could play right away. And clearly, he had that information ahead of time. <laughs> no, time out. Virginia Tech to figure themselves out as a team as well as Radford. Yeah, both these coaches are learning more today than they've learned the entire fall, I assure you. <laughs> Radford in the trouble getting the ball inbounds and it's stolen away. Radford a little press after the timeout. They tend to do that. They've done it a couple times after free throws. Not a lot, just to see if you'll mess up, and Virginia Tech accommodated them right there. Good job by Radford on the defensive end. Shot clock still on, about a seven-second differential. Jules inside. Can't hit the shot. Aluma had good position, and now a foul. We called on Kyrie Walker. It should be the bonus. And it will be. So Aluma goes to the line for a one-and-one. One. Bradford's had an advantage getting to the free throw line nine times so far to Virginia Tech's five and three, I believe. Well, Luma at the line has been the, I'll face it, the standout so far here in the first half for Virginia Tech. Yeah, he and John, a couple newcomers have really been the, the impetus for this Virginia Tech uh, late first half surge, if you will. And I think that if you just kept up with Virginia Tech basketball news throughout the, the off season, you just knew that that was going to immediately happen where they're going to be thrown into the lineup and they're going to be kind of trusted to make some big decisions on the floor and Aluma has done that. Both free throws go for the transfer. Here's another transfer in pencil. So Aluma likely to finish the first half with 12 points. And the shot clock off now. There's Ali. Who's he going to go to? Roll and replace. Mangum at the buzzer and gets fouled with one second left here in the first half. Mangum has been really impressive. He's done the acrobatic layups. He's shot the three that time. They reversed the ball into a one-on-one -on -one situation where he shot fake and drove a really good defender in Radford, got all the way to the rim and drew the foul. Really nice play by the redshirt sophomore out of Roxborough. Just across the state line in North Carolina. This has got to be a cradle for basketball talent. Pretty big deal, basketball down in that state. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. Mangum able to hit both. Makes it a six-point game, and that's where we will end things here in the first half. Both teams trying to figure out where they are and who they are here in game one. 37-31. Hokies up top by six. Mangum has two. Playing up against Radford for the first time in his career. Here's a guy that's from Southwest Virginia, from Radford, and has never actually played or coached against Radford University. Yeah, that's pretty unusual. He hadn't stumbled into him at some point in time. <laughs> Almost underway, Trayvon Mangum. Mangum really, we talked about him during the half, really looked impressive. Josiah Jeffers really looked impressive. Ali, the, the freshman point guard, looked impressive. And what are the Highlanders going to need to do to make this game close or even pull it off in the end, man? Well, they've got to continue to execute in the in the half court. And, and, and Mike Jones is very good. They run a little motion offense, a lot of ball screens, but they've just got to finish plays. Virginia Tech very active defensively, a small team. Radford's got to continue to get to the free throw line, too. They've taken some long possessions. Jeffers with a step back. 
That's a tough shot and a rebound corralled by Aluma. Really good defensive possession that time by Virginia Tech on the defensive end. Okie's playing inside of Castle Coliseum with just 250 people allowed in. Here's a lean. Got the roll. Scored on that play in the first half. Hit the elbow and instead of ducking in, a little dribble handoff with the screen and a lean wide open and knocked it down with the friendly roll. Yeah, very friendly indeed. Seemed to be on the iron for about five minutes. Great job by Ali. Ali made a tough shot. Had a little bit of a little bit to say about that shot afterward. <laughs> well, he's playing in his first ever college game, getting a little bit of confidence here. I think he's got plenty of confidence. Good player. <laughs> That's a Radford. Tyrese Radford. Well, That's a long two. Counts for the Hokies. That's something he didn't do a year ago, though, Bailey. That's an improvement. That's that all-season work that you put in as a player and as a coaching staff. He's a guy that excited a lot of people in Blacksburg because of his athleticism. And Radford, particularly on one great play against Wake Forest last year on a reverse dunk. You know, the, you know he, he was a good player a year ago. There's no question. He, he rebounded the basketball, he drove it, he had some big shots and big moments. But the biggest thing that impressed me about Tyrese Radford is he is such a competitor. When the game is on the line, he wants to be involved, whether it's defensively or rebounding the ball or scoring the ball at the rim. He is a great competitor. A yeah, game on the line against North Carolina hit a buzzer beater. North Carolina Manga missed the three. And the rebound for Aluma. There's Beatty from the free throw line. Nothing but that. And when he shoots the ball kind of in rhythm like that, it seems his percentage is much higher. When he kind of hesitates, it doesn't seem like the ball goes in as often for Wabisa Beatty. It'll be interesting to see the progression for Wabisa Beatty this year. Can he improve offensively? Or so in the scoring aspect as Kyrie Walker pounds it off the glass. Yeah, he wanted that ball, felt like he had a good matchup right there. And the Hokies are very small out there other than Aluma. Nobody's bigger than 6'3 on the floor. And I think that's something if you've watched Virginia Tech basketball for the past few years, you've noted that the Hokies never have someone that's humongous down low. Yeah, I think they'll be able to play, you know, a couple big guys together. Mutz and Illumin, of course, Ojiako is, uh, you know, not available right now, but uh, they, they've, got more, they've got some size. You know, you'll see, you'll see Pencil in there, and you'll see Gasson in there. Hard for those guys to get a lot of time today. It's a small Radford team that's very athletic. Elaine lost the ball, picked it back up. And possession arrow keeps the ball with Virginia Tech. Only 11 on the shot clock. Mike Young will try to draw something up here or call something up here. Now, both teams have been very patient. I think that's another takeaway we had from the first half where a good majority of these offensive possessions have been drained down within 10 seconds of the shot clock. And part of that's been good defense, too. Comes a lead, drives through. There's an athletic dribble. Now it goes to the line for a couple. That's the play they scored on earlier. This time they got a lean coming off the screen. The last time they took the screener, Aluma, and popped him out and got that three. Same play they scored on in the first half. See the curl cut right there and going to the hole? The rest of that play could have been Aluma popping back out for the three. Lookie's looking for their ninth win all time against Radford. Oh, it's their largest lead of the game. First time it's turned into a double-digit deficit. And Couture goes to the bench. Bama seal in. Yeah, there haven't been any real spurts in the game. It's just been kind of grinding it out a couple at a time, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Especially early in that first half where it seemed like Radford was playing so well defensively. Beatty playing well defensively, got the steal. Good hustle right there on both ends, on both sides of the ball. Lipscomb never gave up on the play. 
Didn't let Beatty get the ball up on the glass, but Virginia Tech's got the ball now under their basket. Amir Ali back into the game. Now Mike Jones putting a lot of trust in his freshman guard. There's a curl cut and a screen down. Good job by Radford. Really good job. Naheem Aline, but for the offensive foul, sends the ball right back to Radford. We talked about Mangum on the offense, Ben. Watch this. He chases off the screen, gets there in time to contest the shot, then moves his feet and draws the charge on Aline. Outstanding play by Mangum. Well, we've seen with the Virginia Tech offense, the target for most of these shots in the first three and a half minutes have been Naheem Aline. I think trying to get him going. Of course, he finished strong at the end of the first half, too. And we see he'll poke the ball loose. He was off of the freshman from Chesterfield. And he's still coming in and drawing a, a tough assignment right away with Mangum. About four or five differences, di inches difference in height right there. Ali, Beatty locked on him. Graduate student on freshman. Shot clock down to two, someone has to shoot. Ali gets it off and tickles the twine. Outstanding. A look of focus on the face of Ali, he's got 10. He was totally calm as that shot clock was running down. Amasiel lost the ball, stripped loose. It comes Jeffers, it's swatted out of bounds. Aluma got all ball on that one, but it's an eight point game. Famir Ali hitting a three pointer at the buzz. CC Hokies finished to pick 11th in the ACC match. The usual suspects at the top, Virginia gets the nod based really on Sam Hauser, the transfer from Marquette being on this roster. Yeah, do you think those teams in the top four, or, you know, you look at Duke, Carolina, Virginia, you think they ever get tired of being good? Oh, yeah, you get the <laughs> Louisville in that group. Those, right. Those are, those are blue bloods in college basketball. Yeah, Carly Jones, the transfer from Radford, big South player of the year, now playing for Louisville. Mangum. Missed the layup, Amasil, ranging the floor after that rebound. Nice rebound right there in a crowd. Jada's wide open. Famir Ali lost the ball out of the timeout. Lots of fumbling around. Yeah, that, that's not going to be on any highlights right there. The, <laughs> the, the, the down, back, and down right there, you could erase that part of the tape. Yeah, quick, <laughs> quick play of the Benny Hill soundtrack, Benny Hill music. The effort was good. Execution, not so much. <laughs> oh, Mangum. I actually had to sanitize the ball. As it was touched by someone out of play. Oh, Ted Valentine, there's a thing we're going to have to be aware of this year. As crazy as that ball was bouncing around, maybe an exorcism would have been better. <laughs> Kyrie Walker backing up. <laughs> About to tumble down the stairs here in a second like the guy at the end of that movie. Here's Walker. Five of the shot clock. Ali. Tip back can't go for Jonkum. And yet again, Radford will get a fresh chance at this with 20 seconds on the shot clock. A lot of competition. A lot of competition right there. See if everybody puts a body on somebody. No. Nope. Continue. Chasing it. A lot of battling. You really have to be impressed with Ali and how well he has played in his first game as a collegiate player. Hasn't played against anyone else so other the, than Radford in practice. On the toughest position on the floor. Mangum. Trying to back in on Bamisil. Lewis Jonkum. Once again blocked by Aluma. That's a good battle down, down low with two big bodies down there. There you go, Luma. Junker. Luma cuts him off and then still gets a piece of the ball. 
Really good defensive play. That's what I was talking about. He can guard another center, but on the offense, he can really step out and do some different things. Meanwhile, Obisa Beattie comes back in. Bounce in. Walker missed the layup. Another offensive rebound. There's a foul. Mux and Aluma in there together. This will be a different look for Virginia Tech on both ends of the floor. Mux was jumping and trying to contest shots all over. Bradford stayed after. Good job by Walker. Kyrie Walker out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Kyrie Walker and this entire Radford team. This has been such a long possession for the Highlanders. We're fighting on the offensive glass. That's cutting into that double digit lead. And that's been a characteristic of Virginia Tech in the past couple of years, trying to win the rebound game. And unfortunately for the Hokies, it's been rare that they've been able to do that. Yeah, this, this will be a little bit different team. Obviously, they're still searching for the right lineup. But they'll be small again a lot of the time, but I think they'll be able to match. And uh, with a little first little defensive change, a little zone, show a little 1-1-3. One, one, it'll rotate into a 2-3 zone. Why are they doing that, Mac? Just to change things up a little bit, keep Virginia Tech from getting comfortable. Well, Aline looked pretty comfortable on that jump stop pop. Porter misses the shot from long range. And tipped out of bounds. We'll see another baseline out of bounds play for Radford. Yeah, Radford continues to still battle on the backboard. They've had a they've had a, a, a five or six rebound margin, seems like the entire game, 23 to 18 right now. Okay, still lead by eight. Led by as much as eleven. Clock running down. Ali, bounce inside. Mangum gets the bucket to go with a shot clock running down. He posted Bama Sill up for like 15 seconds and buried him under the basket. It was an unbelievable post up. And Mike Jones, the head coach for Radford, was throwing around fist pumps everywhere after that. Aluma able to duck inside and get the basket to fall. You get the ball to the high post against the zone, it's usually good news for the offense. Good high-low right there for Virginia Tech attacking Bradford's 2-3 zone. Ali scoops and misses. Bit of speed for the Hokies now. Bam a seal. Lost the ball, picked it back up. Well, and it goes out of bounds, staying with the Hokies. Oh, Radford using all of the shot clock, using the glass. Look at Mangum posting up. He's posted his man all the way off the floor, maintained that position with great footwork, and they finally found him. That was about 10 seconds into the post up where we finally saw it happen on the field. Great play. Mangum, by the way, with 11 points now. Aluma swirls it home. 17 points in his debut in a maroon and orange uniform. Last trip down, a duck in and a layup. This time down, the three. That's that diversity of offense that we were talking about Virginia Tech has this year that they didn't have a year ago. Rebound Bamasil. Bamasil's showing some spring in there. He's been battling on the backboard. That freshman that's getting a lot of time. Bradford got out of that zone, didn't have a lot of success in it. Oh, Mutz trying to call for the ball down low. Jada tried to force it. alley -oop coming up. And that went in. He missed the dunk, and the ball popped through the net anyway. Or the freshman. Well, they tried to telegraph that, and I guess it counts the same, Mac. Aluma skies to the rim and a charge. Bradford down by nine, but still a good amount of energy for the Highlanders. Aluma with 17 points. Hokies. Keyshawn, these look pretty solid for Mike Young's squad. Yeah, Aluma, the redshirt junior, transfer from Wofford out of Berlin, Maryland. 
We talked to you about how just a cerebral player he is on both ends of the floor, but he's got that big body put on you on offense and defense, and he's got the skill to step out, and he's really a good defender. You haven't seen it today, but he can guard almost anybody on the floor. Yeah, a couple of blocks for Aluma. Pretty convincing ones as well. Thirty of fifty-three points scored in this game are played by players making their debut. So mostly that's Aluma. You also have Jada. Mutz is on the floor as well. Here's Hunter Couture has yet to score in this game. Radford. It was wide open, but shrugged that three off. Yeah, they played off of him and played him by scouting report, and he didn't take it. Picked away, Xavier Lipscomb. Lipscomb, another good-looking freshman out of D.C. Fresh, oh. Freshmen don't look like freshmen anymore, Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> they, they come in physically and mentally mature, a little bit ready to go. A little bit different from when you were here as a GA. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> times different. Weight room was just a rumor back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and no one about nutrition was, too, to be honest. All right. Here's Lipscomb. Bradford hanging in there, down by nine, make it six. Xavier Lipscomb. Not a good job on the ball screen that time. Mutz didn't help. And they got a wide open look for the freshman that we just mentioned out of Washington, D.C. St. Stephen's St. Agnes, another good basketball school. A lean from the top. Clapped in rebound by Jules. Good execution that time, couldn't knock it down. Radford making this a two possession game after that three. Lead went away in a hurry, Bailey. Right. And the lead wasn't even that big to begin with. I mean, just 11 points. Right to Tyrese Radford. Track meet down the floor. And finishes, no. Count it, actually. It's a goaltend with the foul. Actually make it no foul, just a goaltend. So the bucket counts for Tyrese Radford. Well, Ali, the freshman makes the turnover on the other end, and Radford does what he normally does, attacks the rim. Goaltend, basket, Hokies. A little bit of contact there. Radford makes the basket go anyway. You're not questioning the officials. No, are, no, right? I'm, not, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I'm up here for a reason. They're down there. A lead. Snagged by Mutz. Flying up the floor. Jada's wide open. That was a good look. Yeah, wide open and great job in transition by the Hokies. Well, Xavier Lipscomb heating up for the Highlanders. Really impressed by this whole freshman class of Mike Jones. And we talked about his outstanding staff. They've been doing their work. Couture getting work done in the far corner. Speaking of work, Hunter Couture, he probably takes about as many shots as anybody. He and Cone both, and, and it shows. That's his first bucket of his sophomore season. Last year shot around 40% from beyond the arc for Virginia Tech. Good switch on the ball screen that time. See how they handle this one. Radford fought over, really good job. Shot clock running down. Switch that ball screen. Couture with the mismatch down low. Ali at the buzzer. Oh, good defense by Beatty. That's a great job all around defensively by Virginia Tech. Lipscomb. He's trying to sell the fact that he poked that ball out of bounds off of a Virginia Tech player. And it will stay with the Hokies. Got another timeout on the floor. 58-49. Hokies in a tight one angle. <laughs> Look at some games around the conference. North Carolina ready to take on College of Charleston. And basketball season underway. Well, we didn't know what it was going to look like, but we could assume, at least for the first game, that there was going to be some rust. And Virginia Tech has had a little bit of it today with the Highlanders keeping this within double digits. 
2-3 zone out of the timeout, mixing things up. Mike Jones against Mike Young. See, if I say them both, you don't know whether I messed it up or not. Shot clock at the buzzer. Couture! Pro-length triple for the sophomore from Florida. A not-so-good uh, possession bailed out by a great shot. Hokies needed that bucket to go. The Hokies are now 9 for 12 in the second half, Bailey. And a foul, Keyshawn Porter. So Porter with the N1 makes it a 10 point game. We got another break, but Hunter Couture, Mac, what a three. A little deep, no problem. Two out of three today. Oh, Couture in those first 23 games. Took him a while to kind of settle in to college basketball. And then those last eight games started to turn a lot of heads. He had signed with Wofford, was headed there with Coach Young. And when Coach Young got the Virginia Tech job, he called him up and said, what do you think about Blacksburg? And uh, Hokie fans are glad that Hunter Couture made that decision. I'd imagine it's pretty enticing to get the call to move up to the ACC. Hokies now 9 for 12, going to play against the zone. 9 for 12 in the second half, Bailey. They have, Radford has missed more shot than Virginia Tech has taken. Hunter Couture still on fire. Third three of the second half. Make that three shots in a row drained by the sophomore. Nice to come off the feature and have the guy make the shot. Great job in the truck. <laughs> Here's Mangum. In and out. Oh, he's got away with that one. Mangum had a wide open look at it. Beatty off the screen. Step back. Sinks the long two. 11 out of 14 in the second half for Virginia Tech. They are on fire. Still making the choices to take some of those long shots, including long twos. Will be Sabidi now with four points. Largest lead of the game for Tech at 14. Inside the Jockum. Out of a double team. Good defense by Virginia Tech. Shot clock running down again. Lipscomb lost the ball. And I hope his defense has been pretty tight in the second half. Two physical guys going at it right there. BD on defense, we've seen that for several years in a Hokie uniform. Lipscomb, the freshman. It's a good battle. BD came out on top that time. If Bradford goes back to the zone or changes it up and goes man to man this time, we'll see. Looks like they're staying in the 2-3 zone. They show it as a 1-1-3 to try to get you to run a different offense. Then they switch. And now they've changed it all together and they've gone man to man as Mike Young raises the fist to signal, let's go five on five. What's that? What's that? What's now in man to man, Radford. Airmaning with a two three, back in the man to man to Tesla Bisabidi. Goes Beatty, threads the ball out. Couture, four in a row for Hunter Couture. It didn't take Justin much long. It didn't take him long to learn to, to find the tour if he's hot, right? <laughs> There's another crisp shot on the outside for Miles yeah, Jones. Coach's son. Yeah, Mike Jones' son, Miles Jones. Sophomore from, you guessed it, Radford. And a whistle that gives the ball back to Radford. Well, Hunter Gator, we talked about it, scoreless in the first half, wide open here, able to drain it home, Mac. Yeah, in rhythm. And then the coach's son, you got to think the coach's son's got the green light, right? <laughs> Came into the game, able to get the three ball. He's staying in right now. Bidi and Ali, they've been going at it all day. Raptor fans can be pretty excited about Ali. There's a charge right outside of the circle. Justin Mutz baiting Jules there to get the ball back for Virginia Tech. Yeah, Mutz is a good defender. Got good length, can block a shot. And you see he's willing to give his body up right here. Gets good position outside the lane even. Took it dead to chest. If you get hit in the sternum, it's going to be a charge every time. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what we can get out of what we can see out of Justin Mutz this year. 
Two points in this game. Here's Couture. Oh, just a bit of a heat check there. Rattled <laughs> in and out. The bench was ready to erupt over there. <laughs> Had the spread out bench, but everybody was up on their feet anyway. Jules takes a tough shot. Beatty stays with it. Beatty. Can't get the long two to fall, and the rebound snatched by Porter. Right back to Virginia Tech. Porter, another one of those freshmen we've been talking about. That time a little bit out of control, lost the ball. The Hokies, a little bit of a larger lead now at 14 points, but if you're Virginia Tech, you, you have some bright spots so far in this game. Obviously, Couture heating up from beyond the arc. You've also seen some athleticism out of Cartier Jada. But for Radford, you got to be kind of proud with how much you've been able to hang in this game. And with 440, lots of things can happen for this talented team that nobody really knew much about. Aluma, though, that's his third dunk of the game. No, we, we talked about, you know, how Mike Young didn't know a lot about the pieces meshing, but he knew a lot about the pieces that uh, Mike Jones, on the other hand, they, these were all new people in new roles. And uh, he, like I said, he's learned a lot about what kind of basketball team he's going to have. And I think mostly he's learned positive things so far today. Well, this is a Radford program that, like we said earlier on, sits at the top of the Big South. Made the tournament in 2018. And just not knowing what they're bringing to this game today, I mean, they have to be a little impressed of how well they've performed. But, you know, you put a little bit of a trust in your talented coach and, and Mike Jones that this team can be back at the top in the Big South. Right now, picked at, to finish sixth in the conference this year. Yeah, and we talked about that. You know, given all they lost, that seemed high. Looking at them, that might be low. <laughs> Especially if, if Mangum can be a talented player this year for the Highlanders. He has 12. And he's a really good player. Kind of a stretch four, but can play some three also. Very athletic, long. A rebound for Jonka. Jeffers, back. <laughs> we, we saw him a lot early, and now here he is back late. Junior out of Burlington. Hokies need a few more buckets to put this one on ice. Gusan. Beanie trying from downtown. Yes. Oh, well, the Hokies have shot so much better in the second half. Over a 50% clip from the field and nearing that from three point land. 12 out of 15. Yeah, four of those shots made by Hunter Couture. There's Beatty with a steal. Switching hands on the dribble. Mutz is wide open. Dusan with a hard fight. Offensive rebound. Beatty skies to the hoop and gets the bucket to fall. He's starting to pull away in the final moments of the second half. So he's getting a little look at the, some of the newcomers, Mutz and Gasson, and uh, but he but he's got veterans out there with him, and that that'll help the learning process for Mike Young's bunch. Yeah, definitely a lot to learn for Virginia Tech. Kevin Aluma learning today, Mac. He's been tough. Yeah, defensive mistake right there, and he makes them pay with an arena that's just beautiful. And then a couple of home games wrapped around, a trip down to my neck of the woods at East Carolina University. Well, for Radford not traveling that much at all, and Lancaster Bible coming to the New River Valley, Mike Jones and his team going to be testing the first couple of games. Now for the Hokies and the Mohegan Sun tournament coming up against Temple and USF. Going to be back here on December 3rd against the Key Dents. And will Penn State in the Big Ten ACC Challenge or 
ACC Big Ten Challenge, I guess, is how we'd refer to it. And <laughs> open against Clemson, you remember that was a big win for Mike Young in his ACC debut last year. And that was a game where the Hokies' leading score from last season, Landers Nolly, went off against Clemson. And now playing for Memphis, one of the couple of transfers that are not in the lineup, obviously, today for Virginia Tech. Mike Young trying to reload this team without Landers Nolly, without P.J. Horn, and without Isaiah Wilkins, who transferred to Wake Forest. And Lewis Jonka misses, misses both from the strike. These are valuable minutes playing against a, a, a someone other than yourself game is just about out of reach but these are key minutes for these coaches to find out even more about their basketball team Gushan misses this guy's got good skills really guard kind of skills can put the ball on the floor can pass it can shoot the basketball meanwhile for Justin Mutz he has four fouls in his opening game at Virginia Tech trying to draw another charge there and got into the wrong place at the wrong time seemingly he would like to uh, to discuss that with Ted Valentine, but uh, if he's watched any college basketball, he knows that won't work out so well. <laughs> Mr. Valentine will win that argument. No, it's not necessarily an open <laughs> forum. <laughs> Darius Maddox, the freshman from Bowie, Maryland, into the game. Also went to Oak Hill Academy. Another really good, talented freshman. Mike Young has overhauled this roster in a big way in a short period of time. That's something you can kind of expect. I mean, this is a second-year head coach. Not a lot of holdovers from Buzz Williams. You know, Bisa Beatty being the most notable. And for that matter, Tyrese Radford. And a seal. Third try, make it the fourth try. Can't get it. That'll kill your shooting percentage. 0 for 4 on a trip. <laughs> but it was pretty darn athletic to be able to get the ball back every time, right? Right. Rolls up on the baseline jumper. And a few new players checking in for Radford. And a timeout called by Mike Jones. And so Virginia Tech pulling away here at the end against Radford. Mac, what did you really see out of Virginia Tech in those opening couple of minutes? Well, Kev Aluma was, uh, you know, sort of the story of the game. And, of course, last year you knew what Naheem Aline was capable of. Uh, but I think Mike Young and Hokie fans got glimpses of a, a lot of different weapons for Virginia Tech. No, nothing really consistent, but their defense improved as the game went on and their execution offensively. Uh, you saw them be spectacular again from a shooting percentage-wise in the second half. 15 out of 21 at this point, almost 60%. Yeah, it took the Hokies a while to heat up there. And then in the second half, Hunter Couture hitting four threes in a row. But you're seeing some new athletes as well, Joe Bamisil being one of them. And just went 0 for 4 on one possession. But you're absolutely right when he did miss. I mean, it did take a lot of athleticism to create those shots yeah. and get those rebounds. He's so, very comfortable out there. He plays with a lot of confidence and has made some good plays in this game. And you have to expect that it's going to take a while before everyone gets completely comfortable, not only with themselves as college basketball players, but with each other. Saw a glimpse of what Jada is capable of, and he's going to play a bigger and bigger role for this team as everybody gets used to playing with each other. Goose on. And a foul. Pencil trying to get his first points as a Virginia Tech Hokie. Well, Mike Young, when we asked about Pemsel a few days ago, he noted that Pemsel is a very smart, great passer that adds a few aspects to this Virginia Tech roster. Yeah, you know, he's played at the, the, the very highest level, playing in the Big Ten for Iowa, playing for Coach McCaffrey, and uh, really understands the game. And a uh, big body guy who can give you some quality minutes down low, but, uh, but has some skill to him also. Got that one to fall. The last time he played here in a game that counted was with the Iowa Hawkeyes. 
And that was maybe his best game in an Iowa uniform. Had 14 points for the Hawkeyes. Or excuse me, 14 rebounds and One six points. One minute to play. He's hoping to duplicate that a few times this year. Kind of the final minute. Ali misses. And the whistle keeps the play under the basket. Not sure who fouled who, but it was a lot of collision in the Right. Day. Well, somebody hit the floor. Bodies went flying. You get a great look at it here. Good job of contesting this shot. And then on the backside, it's a little, I guess they just got a little tangled up. So now for Jules. Shooting two. Well, Mac, it's the first time we've really called a game together, and there's not a lot of people in the building. What do you think? You know, I, once the game gets started, I'm so focused on the game that I, that I don't notice that. I'm sure the, the atmosphere and crowd, as you know, it could be great in Castle. Uh, but, uh, you know, once the game started, you know, I, I didn't really feel that it was a lot different. Right. And I'm sure for the players, I probably notice that there's not a student section either supporting them or trying to get them to miss a free throw, but yeah, just playing basketball. And you got to imagine that a lot of these players, matter of fact, most of them, most of the basketball they have ever played hasn't been played in front of a gigantic crowd. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Easier to communicate with each other, easier to communicate for, with the coaches. But I'm sure the emotion is not quite the same as when the band is playing and the cheerleaders are cheering and the crowd is on their feet. Now, right now, just 250 people allowed in the building. Seen some fans scattered throughout. Obviously, mass on as part of a requirement as the cases continue to ramp up in our country. It's going to be a challenge going forward. Let's hope we can get this season in safely. And then we see a lot of good basketball. Here's Porter. Backs up. Gets a shot off at the buzzer. And Virginia Tech takes the first game of the year and wins it in front of 250 fans, 77 to 62. It was slow going in the beginning, Mac, and Radford hung around, but the Hokies, with some great shooting in the second half, they were able to pull away. Yeah, early it looked like both teams were uh, playing their first outside competition, which they were, and uh, they settled down. The effort was really good. Defense was outstanding at times, and Virginia Tech finally got a a little bit of a rhythm in the second half led by Aluma and Couture. Oh, Kebe Aluma with a great start to his Virginia Tech career. Mike Young and Mike Jones talking for the first time them ever interacting in a basketball game 